All right, so now let's explore some looping constructs. So, so far we've seen in our if condition that it just did one thing and then it continued on. But sometimes we need to loop through the same code over and over and over again so we don't have to keep repeating ourselves and write like 99 lines of code 99 times. So we're going to review what a while loop is and we started this last week also. So I'm going to create a Boolean which is either true or false and I'm going to call it a flag. And the idea is as long as the flag is true, we're going to keep looping through uh, through some code. And so I'm going to say while flag, and then let me just um, let me just think about how I'm going to do this while flag, and then we will see out um, wrong direction. See out. Shall I keep looping? And so what we've constructed here is uh, when we have a while loop, the idea is that this loop is going to, the code is going to continue going through this, looping through this lines 13 through 17 over and over and over again until at some point whatever is in our parentheses becomes false. So it's just like our decision structure where we looked and we said if whatever is in here is true, remember this has to be something that evaluates to true or false, then continue on until flag evaluates to false. And if we look at the code here, we're going to get what's called an infinite loop because at no point in time if I do this code over and over and over again, will flag ever be changed. In fact, I don't even have it set to anything at the moment. So let's set it to true, which means that the code will at least run once. When we get here, the code will say, yes, flag is true. Flag is equal to true. So I'm going to continue to do a C out over and over and over again until it's false. Well, nowhere in our code have we set this to false. So what I'm going to do right to start with is I'm going to set flag equal to false as soon as we run the code. So that means that this should only loop once. In other words, we're going to come into the while loop, the, uh, the condition is going to be evaluated, flag is true, we're going to see out once, and then flag is going to be set to false. The code will then read, nope, now flag is false, so it will exit out of the while loop and do whatever is here at the end after the loop is finished. So we'll add this so we know that this code is run once our loop is finished. All right, so let's run that and see what happens. So, somewhere on my screen, I should have there it goes. Sorry, I don't know why I was like, where did it go? It just took a while to run. Okay, so if we look at the code that we have written, there is shall I keep looping? Question mark ran once. The code then got changed the false flag to false, so the while loop stopped running, and then. Um, we printed out the piece of code that was after the while loop, so after the open and enclosed curly brace. All right, so how can we set this to something different? Well, let's do this. Let's ask our user, string um, keep going. Let's ask our user if they want to keep going, and we'll use that as a condition to change our flag, meaning let's do this. Shall I keep looping? So I'm going to ask the user, shall I keep looping? Then we're going to, let's see, uh, C in, keep going. Keep hitting the wrong thing apparently. Keep going. So let's ask our user. They're going to type in something like Y or N. So that's going to be my condition. If keep going equals, remember this is a comparison, it's not equal. So I'm used to equal sign, which really says compare whatever they type in to this. So I'm going to say, if keep going, let's say no. So if they type in a capital N at the keyboard, then that means they don't want to keep looping. So there's my if statement. So I'm going to take my flag and put it in here. And the idea is flag equals false. All right, so let's look at this. So ask the user, shall I keep going? Wait for them to put in a response. If they cap type in a capital N, in fact, maybe I should tell them type N, maybe type N to stop. 
Okay, so I'm going to give you, even give them a clue. If they type in this capital N, then we're going to set the flag to false, which means that the loop will stop running and we'll print this line afterwards. So let's try that. Um, I probably should put an end line at the end here too, just so that I have some clean, um, clean lines entered. Anyway, so let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. So I'm waiting for my console window to come up. I'm waiting. I think I'm waiting for my, oh, it wasn't, I guess I didn't click the button. All right, waiting, waiting, waiting. All right, so what happened? So I got prompted, shall I keep looping? Type N to stop. So I'm going to type anything but a capital N. So you and I think, well, you type the word yes or yes. I understand that, but for now, I'll just do a Y. Shall I keep looping? Well, I can really put anything I want in there because the only thing, the only code I wrote was if they wrote the capital letter N. And I say capital because if I put a little N, that is not the same thing to a computer as a capital N. You're smart enough to know that that's the same letter, but the computer's not. So it's going to keep going until I type anything but a capital N. So as soon as I ca type a capital N, then sure enough, the loop stopped. So we looped over and over and over again until some condition was met, the condition that we created, which was, did they type in a capital N? Well, what if they typed in a little N? Well, that's we're going to use something called a um, uh, conditional operator. So I'm going to type in um, if keep going equals or, no, that's an and, sorry. So let me do this. Okay, so that's the key. If I do shift and the key above your backslash key, and this is what we call an or operator. So what, let me just keep writing, keep going equal, is the same as a lowercase n. And so what this says is or, meaning that if this side is true or this side is true, then the whole thing becomes true. So if they type in a little n or a big n, then this Boolean will render true and then we will get our false. So let's go ahead and run that just to verify that that is in fact working. And it slipped up here again. So if I type, shall I keep looping? I'm going to do a Y. I'm going to J, G. Doesn't matter. But as soon as I type in a little N, we saw the big N work last time. So now I'm going to use a little N. And in fact, it finished out the loop. So that's one way that we can break out of our while loop. Something else that you can do, and sometimes you'll see, instead of putting the word flag or changing our condition, you can put the word break, B-R-E-A-K. And all that means is just no more conditions, no more code runs, just automatically break out of this loop and go to the next line. So in our code, it's going to look the same, but this is another word that you will see. Instead of resetting a value to be evaluated in our condition here, just break out. Just don't even, I don't even care anymore, just get, get going. And so let's just verify that that's working. And so again, I'll pull my code over and then it says, um, shall I keep, I'm just gonna say no right off the bat, no. And it should hit that break statement and then break out. So it is doing that. So this is one way in this video, we've seen a while loop and we've seen a Boolean variable, a Boolean data type keeping track of true or false to determine whether or not we keep going in our while loop but we had to make sure that we gave some kind of condition within our while loop so that we can break out of it. In other words, flag had to be somehow changed to false in order for us to get out of the loop, or we had to break. And the way that we did that was by asking our user, would you like to break out of this, yes or no? And when they typed in these N or a little N, we either changed the flag to false or we just broke out of that loop altogether.